Uh, this week, Australia has been criticised for turning its back on climate change while continuing to invest in coal. So, are we a dirty country? Josh Zepps decided to look into it. You are a very polluting nation and you've got a decision to make as a government about whether you're prepared to do anything serious to change that. Tough words put to our treasurer Joe Hockey on the BBC this week. And it's true. Australia is the biggest per capita greenhouse gas polluter in the developed world. And that's because of our love affair with coal. You sell an awful lot of coal in Asia and that raises questions about Australia's commitment to cleaning up its act. Is your government prepared to do anything to clean up its act? Well, firstly, the, the comment you just made is absolutely ridiculous. Why? Uh, well, Australia is a significant exporter of energy. And boy, do we export it. Nearly 50% of our export revenues come from what we dig out of the ground. We're the second biggest exporter of coal in the world. It's our second most exported commodity after iron ore. It's been estimated coal is responsible for 74% of the electricity generated in Australia, but also responsible for 75% of our greenhouse emissions from energy. And it's also estimated 78% of the coal we mine actually gets exported overseas. Meaning not only are we producing huge amounts of greenhouse emissions from coal here at home, we're at least in part responsible for far more greenhouse emissions elsewhere around the world. Coal as an energy source is the most polluting and it's the most damaging to our health in terms of all the energy sources that we currently use in Australia and at a global level. Coal is good for humanity! <laughs> at least our PM did this week while opening the Cavill Ridge coal mine in central Queensland, which just so happens to be one of the biggest coal mines in Australia. This is a sign uh, of hope and confidence in the future of the coal industry. But not everyone is so optimistic, like the Chinese. Last month, our communist friends announced plans to stop importing what they've classified as dirty coal, which, according to estimates by Macquarie Bank, could affect more than half of Australia's thermal coal exports to China. Which is bad news for us, because if there's two things we love more than coal, it's twerking coal miners and exporting coal to the Chinese. We export about 100 million tonnes to China each year, which accounts for a quarter of our total exports and rakes in incredible super-sized profits of about $9.3 billion for us. And why is it so, as Professor <coughs> Julia Sumdamilla used to say? Well, I say us, but uh, the government ditched the mining tax, so. Money aside, coal is really bad for the environment. And while Australia is investing further in coal, the rest of the world is moving away from it because they're increasingly concerned about climate change. And here's where things get kind of weird. Australians also care about climate change. In the past two years, more and more of us view it as a serious and pressing problem. Despite this concern, in the last 12 months, the government has ditched a carbon tax for major polluters, cut research for climate change from the budget, killed off the position of science minister altogether, and appointed a climate skeptic to review our renewable energy targets. <laughs> At one point, our environment minister was going to dump dredgings on the barrier reef before community backlash changed his mind. This government says, look, we don't want to leave a legacy of debt and deficits to our children. We don't want to leave our children with the expectation of an age of entitlement, but we're quite happy to leave them with a, a massive climate exposure, which will really constrain the livelihoods and the standard of living of our children and their, and their children. And I think that's a grossly irresponsible position to take. Start digging up uranium and start building nuclear power stations. Oh, actually, well, no, actually, that is a related argument. That's which, the cleanest that, energy. I, I think exactly. the whole point of this argument, surely, is to transition. Yeah. Right, mm. and and I think this is where a lot of the criticism the government gets is coming from. It's not necessarily the argument says no more coal tomorrow. That's it. That's the end of the story. It's about how do you get from A to B, and if you're not investing in renewables and you want to get rid of the renewable energy target as the government tried to do but ultimately couldn't, and you start pulling back your investment in those sorts of things, then you don't make the transition. Ultimately, I think that's the, 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 biggest the market issue. will depend on what happens. I mean, if the market says that we can make money out of uh, wind and solar and we can produce energy from it, then well, the market no, will produce it. But the can market can't replace coal. No, but the market get depends, that out of your head. You can't depends do that. Although, also on government investment, right? So if the government starts giving subsidies or giving investment for that energy to be developed, then it becomes cheaper, then it becomes more profitable, then you create the market. That's the kind of idea. And the government also is concerned about jobs and I mean. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I, they oh, we can too. keep talking. I think we've got a wink wank. I was a journalist before eventually becoming a Prime Minister. 
I've often said that as a journalist I was a frustrated politician. As a politician I'm a frustrated journalist. And while a trainee priest I was just frustrated. <laughs> In the last laugh, he's obviously put in the heart. He's looking a bit ginger. Oh. It's a bit poppy. <laughs> poppy limo? I, th I think he might need a massage just to, just to work out the bumps and bruises from 